Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, and this time it is going to be on my updated Performer Pals Zodiac deck list for the new format. Now, I did a previous deck profile literally the day that the new format ban list was spoiled, like a couple hours before the ban list was spoiled, and basically it really heavily changed the idea that I had to go into with how I was approaching the deck in terms of how it was built and stuff like that. And I've been testing a bunch of different versions and doing all that sorts of stuff and ultimately wasn't really getting any results until I started implementing some more of the more extensive Zodiac draw combos into the deck. Uh, now this list that you see here is the list that if I had gone to YCS Denver I would have definitely more than likely played this list um, simply because I've been having a lot of success with it. It is a 48 card deck list uh, but there are some cards that you can shave out of it to bring it down to like 44 or 42 cards. Uh, depending on like what you want to change personal ratio wise. I personally am really liking the deck at 48 uh, Simply because it makes your grass matchup better because they're milling less cards uh, because your deck is a little bit thicker as well as it just seems to affect your draw ratios of like drawing your brick cards a lot less often than you would be drawing your other like more uh, prominent cards but anyway this is like one of my favorite decks I've ever played and I really I love the fact that I'm still able to at least play it in some capacity uh, metal foes might just in general be better but uh, I just love the good quality performer pal cards that we have access to in this deck but anyway uh, three copies of performer pal pendulum sorcerer because this card is amazing uh, one copy of skull Corbat joker one copy of get turtle two copies of lizard draw to make the draw suit combo happen there and one copy of odd eyes perform pal light phoenix and then one odd eyes perform pal unicorn now for more Pendulum Monsters, we've got three copies of Magical Abductor. Essentially, you're trying to open either Sorcerer or Abductor, and with this build, I'm playing a lot of the, like, materials, basically, to uh, perform the, uh, like, Zodiac draw five combos and draw four combos with Fusion Substitute, with multiple Fusion Substitutes. And so, essentially, what you're trying to do is you're trying to draw into either Pendulum Sorcerer off those, or you draw into Magical Abductor anywhere along those combo lines, and you can put Abductor in your scale, and by the end of your Fusion Substitute plays, you will have either three counters on it or the cards in your facilitation and like in your in your card pool like drawing into terraformings and sky irises and other scales and stuff like that to allow this card to get to three counters to search your pendulum sorcerer so like you're basically just trying to get to your win condition and that is the, the pendulum sorcerer but the uh, the low scale dragoons of draconia to search off of your broad bull and tenki occasionally uh two arch phoenix centrics and one luster pendulum these are just other good targets to search off of your magical abductor uh, this being a generic high scale as well as being, you know, MST essentially is really good. Uh, Luster is also a card that's rotated its way back into the deck because of the fact that you're just trying to gather as many cards as possible with your Zodiac draw combos and stuff like that. And if you get access into your, like, Pendulum Sorcerer and an Abductor in the same hand, uh, you typically want to go for something like Luster because it just threatens an Ignister the following turn very easily off your Pendulum Summon, as well as it starts fueling your extra deck with multiple copies of Sorcerer or multiple copies of Abductor. And in the case of Abductor, you get to like possibly Pendulum Summon it and then do some things like searching Valor and nonsense like that. But uh, there's a Mass Chameleon in the deck as well to be a generic tuner to search off of your King of the Fairlamps, which is a very common play. Most of the zoo plays that you do in this deck involve just drawing like three cards and searching a scale. Or, uh, or Mass Chameleon, depending on what your uh, stuff was, or you draw like four search of scale, or you can just generically just draw five cards uh, if you're already set as far as the cards you wanted to search, uh, or like cards that you need in your uh, Pendulum Summon like availability. So like there's there's all that. This deck is super flexible in terms of the plays that it can make when you're uh, when you're doing your first turn uh, boards uh, to meld your stuff. But uh, there's two copies of Rat Pier in the deck, and then one copy of a Whip Tail of Whip Glare apparently. Uh, Jesus Christ. Whiptail essentially is kind of necessary in the deck now. Um, not kind of necessary, it's 100% necessary because with the loss of the third wrap here, it means you can't do just regular fusion substitute combos without having another level 4 in deck. The best fusion sub combo that you can open is opening wrap here or Tenki plus instant fusion because that allows you to draw uh, 4 cards in search of scale or draw 5 cards. And the reason you're able to do that is because you normal summon the rap here and you send whip tail to grave or just any level four zodiac because that allows you to bring it back off instant fusion for norden uh, and then you go into your play string from there uh so like whip tail is just the best one to play i didn't want to play anything else like thoroughblade or anything like that because i just don't want to like clump my hands down uh because like all you really need for a lot of the generic draw combos for the zodiac engine is just terror top plus a normal summonable level four or Normal Summon Rat plus Instant Fusion, or Barrage plus a level 4, or stuff like that. And, like, this deck has an abundance of, like, good level 4s that you'd rather have access to, uh, rather than just drawing things like clumping Thoroughblades and stuff like that. But, so, uh, the Zoo Engine is definitely in here. This is getting pretty messy. A lot messier than I was expecting it to be, but 
Uh, three Teratops and one Takatom Borg, obviously, because this engine is still super good, super powerful, super potent in terms of uh, in terms of what it's uh, what it allows you to have your access into as far as your zoo stuff. Uh, but you basically only always use this into going into a, a zoo play in this deck now. You don't even like mess with Totem Bird. Uh, because messing with Totem Bird is just not what we're trying to do. Uh, but then one Lunalite Black Sheep, just to search the Fusion subs. The one copy of Maxi, because it's basically the best card in the format. Uh, and then two copies of Effect Veiler. Uh, I'm playing Effect Veiler over every other hand trap uh, in this deck specifically because it's searchable off of your Abductor plays. Uh, so it gives you a searchable defensive line. And like, so Veiler might not be as well situated in the format as other hand traps like DD Crow and uh, Ghost Ogre are right now. Um, it's arguably like weaker than both of those in certain situations, but it is still pretty all right in terms of what it's like good against and when you're using it. But it being free in this deck definitely makes up for tons of those uh, of those lacking factors that it has on like under DD Crow and Ghost Ogre. Uh, the fact that it's just free and you can just get it for free off of a magical abductor is just absolutely insane because that's that's what pushes it over the edge to be like the hand trap of choice that I'm putting in this deck. Uh, you could easily shave one out if you wanted to, just for deck space. Like I said, this is a 48-card deck, uh, so you could easily shave things out, like the Mask Chameleon. You could shave out a Veiler. Uh, there, there are definitely, there's definitely room to cut things, but I just like the options that it presents. And like I said, I like my Grass matchup being a little bit better because my deck's a little bit bigger and they can't mill as many cards. But anyway, for spells, two copies of Skyrus and two copies of Terraforming, just so you can see it a decent amount of the time. Uh, and also, Terraforming is just great to draw with Abductor and all that nonsense. Uh, for fusion-based cards, we have one Odd-Eyes Fusion to search off of the Sky Iris, uh, two copies of Fusion Substitute, and then we have three Instant Fusion. Uh, now, Fusion Substitute has this really interesting interaction in this deck as well, uh, where you can use this to summon Odd-Eyes Vortex Dragon multiple times in a game, uh, because if you Odd-Eyes Fusion into Vortex Dragon and it, and it dies for whatever reason, it gets striked or whatever, you can Fusion Substitute your stuff that you pendle them out. Like, you can pendle them out like an Odd-Eyes Light Phoenix and a Sorcerer, or a Joker, and just fusion sub, uh, and just bring back the Odd-Eyes Vortex Dragon um, after you've put it back into your extra deck off Emerald or something. Or once that Odd-Eyes Vortex dies, if you have fusion substitute in your grave, if that's the way you summon it the original time, you can banish fusion sub, shuffle it back, draw a card, and then you still have access to like Odd-Eyes Fusion or the other fusion sub. It's actually really cool. Uh, but then instant fusion is really neat in this deck because it just allows you to have you know good access into rank four potential as well as with the Mass Chameleon in the deck, it gives you good access into your things like Stardust. Meteor Burst and Ignister, which are all in the extra deck, which are all very good and impactful synchros in their own right. Uh, but being able to just have like one card Emeralds, one card Broad Bulls, one card King of the Fair Limpses to search either high or low scales or things like that is really good. As well as, like I said, the Rat combo. Rat plus Instant Fusion is the best combo to open because it allows you to draw four cards or five cards if you just choose not to search a scale at the end. Uh, but I digress. But Three copies of Tanky because we're trying to support uh, the rat combos the most we can with like the best quality card. This, if you draw this in like in multiples or like if you draw it with a rat or with a barrage or with Terra Top or whatever, you just use it to get a scale or you use it to get the Lunalite Black Sheep or you use it to get the Whip Tail to be uh, your normal summoned level four to go with your Terra Top or your barrage. Like it just it just works out. So like Tanky is definitely a lot better suited in this deck than barrage, which is why I'm only playing two barrage. I didn't want a ton of cards in my deck uh, that were just hard once per turns. Uh, but out of the cards that are hard once per turns, Barrage is like the worst because it only gets Rat. Like it can get Whiptail, but like you're going to be going for Rat with this nine times out of ten. I definitely wanted it in my deck to be able to like pop it um, and like pop like scales out and stuff like that, and just have it as an option to be another starter. But like Tinky is just better, uh, Terra Top is just better, and like Instant Fusion is a better card to be like a like card to draw multiples of. Especially since you have fusion substitute plays and stuff like that that just basically make the instant fusions live for the remainder of the game as well. So all that sort of nonsense. But one copy of Book of Moon because this is a great like defensive card as well as offensive card this format. Uh, Book of Moon is really interesting how it's like really good like in back in favor of like you just go against a board and you Book of Moon like their key card like Dryden's or whatever. Or if you go first you set it. And depending what deck you're playing against Book of Moon just ends, the game, uh, ends their turn much like Dimensional Barrier does. But uh... But speaking of, three dimensional barriers are in this deck, obviously. This is the only like real trap, and then there's one copy of Imperial Order. This is the 48th card. This is another one of those cards. I'm kind of iffy on this card. Uh, in the main, it might end up like being swapped for something like a, a, just a random Solemn Strike or like a Solemn Warning or something. Uh, but I just wanted really high impact cards um, that like I could draw off of my Geturtle Lizard draw plays, um, off of my Zodiac like combos, and just have really strong cards I could draw into and barrier and Imperial order just seemed like those cards that were uh, 
were those. A barrier was obviously the choice, the obvious choice. But Imperial Order was the one that kind of stood out a little bit more as far as, like, traps that I could have played. Um, I mean, the only other card I think this would probably be would, could be, like, a Raigeki or something, or just not be a card in the deck at all. Uh, but I'm actually just, like, more pleased with it here than I am with anything else. That's just, uh, that's just my own personal thought process on it. Uh, but basically, like, yeah, you're, the entire point of this deck is literally just generate advantage upon advantage on your first turn, and you usually just end with, like, you do any manner of Zodiac draw play. You draw two in Search of Scale, or draw four in Search of Scale, draw three in Search of Scale, or just draw three, four, or five cards. And in the process, you get searches off your Magical Abductors, your Sky Irises, whatever, and you usually end with a board of, like, Stardust, Dryden, plus, like, you resolve your Turtle Lizard draw, so in total you drew, like, seven or eight cards. Um, and so, like, you've cycled through your deck a ton, and you just end with, like, just boards of, like, Stardust, Vortex Dragon, Dryden, uh, backed up by Order or Dimensional Barrier or something like that. Usually, like, you could have Searched Veilers in there, too. There's just a lot of really, like, key, like, overlap as far as what this deck does for, like, def generating defensive lines. I like decks that can generate their own defense out of their offense, and that's that's why this deck sort of just speaks to me in the way that it does. I just love this deck. Uh, but for the extra deck, Synchros. All of them are summonable. Uh, Ignister, Stardust, and uh, Meteor Burst. This is summonable off your Lizard Draw um, with uh, with a Mass Chameleon. And these are actually just more accessible than they've ever been. Uh, specifically Ignister, because I have Luster back in the deck now, so like you can do your Magical Abductor play, search Luster, and then the Luster gets put in your extra deck off Sky Iris or your, uh, your Pendulum Sorcerer, and it just chills there until the next turn, so it's threatening an Ignister very easily. As well as the Instant Fusions are in the deck, so Instant Fusion can always be a thing to Instant Fusion bring back Mass Chameleon and Synchro away into anything, um, like, based off your situation. Uh, stuff like that. Uh, but then one copy of Odd Eyes Vortex Dragon, because this card is amazing. Uh, literally Solemn Judgment, and it bounce, it spins a card when it comes out, so that's great. Um, and then, like, the Fusion cards you use to make it is great. It's just great for going second. Um, you can just force a lot of cards with it. Uh, one copy of Norden for the Instant Fusions and the Fusion Substitute, to a lesser degree. Uh, one copy of Odd Eyes Rebellion Dragon to just go with a Meteor Burst Dragon so Odd Eyes Fusion has targets. You literally can't summon this card, uh, so it literally doesn't matter if it's Raging Dragon or not. Uh, one copy of King of the Fairlamps. This lets you search Lizard Draw or Mass Chameleon. If you decide to cut Mass Chameleon, I'd probably cut this card out of the deck. Uh, that's uh, just to free up room in the extra deck. But uh, two copies of Digusto Emerald because you need it for like infinite loops and stuff with your uh, Zodiac combos because ban Norden. Uh, and then for Zoo cards, you are required to play two Broad Bowl. But the rest of them are all one ofs. Uh, one Dryden, double Broad Bull, one Tiger Mortar, and one Borbo. Um, Broad Bull is literally the only one that you need two of because you have to summon the second one uh, before you could recycle one with Emerald, um, essentially, and you have to be able to search the second Black Sheep. Uh, but so, like, it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's like the engine just kind of melds around in the way that it needs to work. Um, when we had three Rat, we only needed one Broad Bull for, like, the Fusion Sub combos because you could just detach Broad Bull off of uh, Tiger Mortar, re-equipping Rat, and then you could shuffle the same Broad Bull back with the first Emerald, and then you could make the second uh, second Broad Bull, but it was, in reality, the first Broad Bull. Uh, but those days are gone, because we only have two Rats now, so it's a little bit harder, a little bit harder to deal with. But you basically just play the bare minimum of what you need to make the combos live, and then you let your Pendulum Engine carry you the rest of the way. Uh, the last card in the extra deck is a one copy of MX Saber Invoker. Like I said, there's no Totem Bird in this deck. Uh, because very rarely will you have hands where you're like opening Terratop plus Rat and you're not just going to make the Invoker anyway. Because if you open like Terratop plus Rat, you'll just Invoker and summon the Whiptail out of deck and then normal summon Rat. Uh, because then that's Terratop plus a level 4. The level 4 in your hand just happened to be Rat and you use Terratop to complete the to complete the other side of the equation with the other level 4. And that ends up being a draw 4 combo. Or draw 3 and search a scale off King of the Fairlamps or a Broad Bull. Um, it's literally up to you at that point, but uh, this deck is super flexible in terms of its play lines I just wish there was a little bit more room in the extra deck. Um, I'm actually really considering cutting like the rebellion dragon um, Or cutting like th yeah, probably the rebellion dragon because meteor burst is summonable um, and just like having like just like try to try to get lucky basically <laughs> I don't know I side two extra deck cards for this deck um, because every game that I go first, I literally, uh, I literally take out the, uh, the, the Meteor Burst and, um, and the Rebellion. And I put in cards like Dweller or Diamond Dyer or whatever. I might just be citing, like, three extra cards in this deck. Um, like, things like Diamond Dyer and stuff are cool things that come up every once in a while. But, I mean, I guess Ignister is just better. And if you're able to keep resolving Ignister over and over again by using Instant Fusions to emerald everything back and 
keep summoning Ignister over and over again. I guess that's I guess that's a good enough game plan for like trying to win a game, right? But anyway, that's been the deck profile. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, whether you like it, whether you hate it or not. Not I mean like I really like this deck. Like I said, Metal Foes might just end up being like the better pendulum variant, but this one definitely just does a lot more on its uh, turns. On, like on a turn by turn basis, this deck just does literally so much more than uh, than Metal Foes does as far as uh, as far as play lines. And like that actually just really pleases me <laughs> on a very on a very big level. Uh, I love the fact that like this deck can just do so much. I just wish the extra deck was a little bit like more flexible because, like I said, I would like to be making things like maybe Rafflesia or uh, like Giant Hand or something like that, making other defensive lines. Uh, but we'll maybe we can fine tune it. Maybe we can figure out what what to cut. Maybe Odd Eyes Fusion is just something that. Uh, we don't need to worry about maining the targets for. Like, maybe we can decide them for going second. Um, I don't know. There's there's possibilities. There's things that can happen. There's things that can come up in the future. But anyway, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below, as always. But other than that, thanks for watching, guys. As usual, like I've already said, leave your comments in the comment section down below. I would love to know your opinions and stuff like that. But other than that, check out the links in the description to my Patreon and Facebook pages. If you want to support the channel directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. Also gets you entry into an end-of-the-month raffle giveaway for a significant amount of Konami product. For this month, I'm giving away a box of Maximum Crisis once it hits street, once it hits uh, the streets uh, and like stores. So I'll be giving away a box of Maximum Crisis to one of the random people that supports me through Patreon just as a way to say thanks. It's just a fun little way to say thanks to people. But also, different war tiers get you access into different things, so definitely check those out. But other than that, if you're looking to buy or sell cards while also indirectly supporting the channel, then check out Second Chance Gaming's website, which is also linked in the description. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and I'm a big fan of how they do business with what I've dealt with so far. So definitely go check out their site and uh, let them know that Phoenix sent you. But other than that, that's it for this video. As I've already said, thanks for watching, thanks for your time, and as usual, guys, take care. I'll see you in the next video.